So hello viewers, today I am going to demonstrate you how uh, to treat a moral level lesion. Now moral level lesion uh, is not very common and if you don't know about it then you will not be able to diagnose it. Now this is an internal degloving injury due to shearing force. Now it is usually most common at the site of greater trochanter which is the case uh, in our patient as well and it is usually after the trauma. Now what happens is uh, because of the shearing force, the fat, the lamellar flat uh, gets uh, uh, sheared away from the deep fascia and this leads to the tearing of the small vessels. Uh, they can be arterial capillaries, they can be venous, small, uh, venous vessels or lymphatics. And this leads to a large collection of hemolymphatic mass uh, which we call as mural level lesion. If you see a patient after trauma and if you see a fluctuant mass at the site of injury and this fluctuation, fluctuant mass, you will feel as if there is a sack of water uh, deep uh, to the skin and I will show you how it looks and once you see it, you will never forget it and it will be very easy to diagnose. In terms of diagnosing and investigation, uh, if you use an ultrasound uh, scan then you will be able to see a large collection. You can see the same thing in MRI. Mostly it is clear and it is into a large single sac but you can have septations and sometimes you can have debris or a small collection of uh, you know hemo uh, lymphatic uh, tissue as well. Now it is a straightforward thing. Uh, you can always use a CT as well especially in the cases where there is a fracture and if you do the CT scan, you will be able to see the, uh, this large mass. So it's very easy to diagnose. Now in terms of management, it ranges from uh, a non-invasive uh, methods like compression therapy for a small collection to draining uh, it with a needle uh, or using a sclerosin or if in a chronic cases, then you may use a large incision and take out all the capsule. Now today we are going to hopefully just aspirate and put some sclerosin followed by compression dressing in order to treat this condition. So if you see this gentleman, this gentleman has got a large collection, you know, right away going from the greater trochanter here down to up to uh, the junction of uh, lower one third and upper two third. And if you see this, this is, this is the extent of the collection. And you can see it's like, you know, if I'm Palpating it, you will feel like a, a collection of water just underneath it. It is just a serosanguineous collection. So if I am tapping it here, you can see my finger jumping up here. So it's like a water. Now this is between the layer of the fat and the layer of the deep fascia. So it's not really um, into the muscle and that differentiates it from the hematoma because hematoma is deeper. And this is quite fluctuant and if you feel it, uh, it feels quite uh, different to hematoma. So once you see this, this is how a mural level lesion will present. And this is the commonest site, but it can happen anywhere in the body if there is a sharing force. So my advice to you is if uh, you are doing uh, aspiration, then you should be doing in theater just in case if you are not successful in aspirating everything and you have to make an incision um, then you can do it in theater and it is far more uh, sterile than uh, uh, when if you do it in an outpatient basis. So you can see that this is the proximal extent, this is the distal extent. So I have taken a 50 mil um, syringe and I have taken a 16 gauge needle. So first I am going to go distally and then try to aspirate. And normally as I said in my introduction, this is usually a hemoceros collection. So you should be able to aspirate quite easily. So now you can see I have aspirated around 50 mils. I was not comfortable from the other direction. So I shifted my position. And this is, you can see the red color fluid. And as I said in my introduction, this is due to a rupture of the capillaries as well as lymphatics. So this is my proximal extent done. We have aspirated 50 here and 30 before, so around 80 ml so far. So I'll repeat the procedure from the proximal end 
and then we will try to aspirate from the proximal end as well and you can see if you're in the right space the aspiration is quite straightforward so i'm just going to continue it so far we have easily taken out around 30 35 mils and then i will continue to aspirate and I'm almost 50 mils here so i'm just going to take the syringe out and then try it again so you have to keep doing it till you have aspirated most of it so i'm just put a new syringe and then continue to aspirate and you will see on this occasion we have been lucky that there are no septas and this fluid is almost completely off so you need to keep once you have aspirated most of it the needle in the right place so just take off the needle and leave them so that now we can inject our sclerosant and then apply the compression dressing so we have aspirated uh, so far around 60 here 60 120 and 20 so around 140 mils and i think this is almost empty so a little bit remaining um, i've just left it because if you take out everything then needle can get malpositioned so i've just left a uh, little bit um, of the fluid so that needle is in the right place so that we will now inject our sclerosant leave it for around 30 minutes and then we will aspirate our uh, sclerosant back out and then we will apply the compression dressing so our sclerosant is uh, 500 milligram of uh, doxycycline 25 mils of uh, uh, saline normal saline and 25 mils of uh, one percent uh, xylocaine um, now what you do is just you leave the needle inside and then you inject it in the same space and you can see the swelling is becoming worse so do it from one side and we need to leave it for roughly around 30 minutes some people will leave it for longer but i leave it for roughly around 30 minutes and we will need to revisit again um, once 30 minutes are over waited half an hour we are just going to use the same track and try to aspirate what we have left it inside so just be patient and then we are going to use both the proximal and the distal and to aspirate what we had pushed in and then we will apply the pressure dressing i'm just going to repeat the same thing distally as well and try to aspirate whatever we have pushed in so this is virtually empty there's nothing i've left this thing just to drain a little bit so not much coming out so you can see there is nothing now previously it was all fluctuant i'm just going to push a little bit through this needle so that last drop comes out so now it's just a matter of applying some sterile dressing and some pressure dressing on top nothing left we have taken everything out through these small holes so i'm just going to put some sterile dressing and then we're just going to put some compressor um, compression dressing on top so just a small layer of cotton followed by application of crepe bandage so you need to be firm so that you decrease any chance of uh, recurrence so this is how i apply the pressure dressing and that's the end of the procedure so viewers this was a short demonstration about how to manage a moral level lesion now i hope after watching this video you will be able to diagnose this with ease 
Uh, if it's a small lesion, you can manage uh, it with uh, non-surgical methods in form of compression dressing, um, and it should get better. However, a large lesion like this um, needs aspiration and injection of sclerosin. Um, if there is recurrence, you may have to repeat the procedure, or sometimes you may have to do an open procedure as well. I'm sure after watching this video, you should be able to uh, manage and diagnose moral level lesion with ease. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.